There are a bunch of different types of activities in Moodle, and here I've just thrown a bunch in sort of randomly to show you what they look like. Uh, notice that, for example, if in your installation you might not have map, or you might not have journal, or you might have all of these, or you might have extras, because there are an awful lot of add-on modules that you can go get for free from Moodle.org, and there may even be some co commercial modules. So, as they say, your mileage may vary. I'm a big fan of assignment, forum, and quiz, which is here. So those are the three that make up the bulk of my courses. I do always throw in a couple choices. I do like glossary, and I've shown this to a number of faculty, and they appreciate it because you can not only create your own glossary, take one from the textbook, but you can also have students create their own entries and, and have them rate each other or have you rate them. So those come in handy. Each of these has their place in education, uh, just depending on what you're doing and how much effort you're going to put into your course and how much time you want to <coughs> take. So I'm not going to go into detail on all of these. Um, but I will cover assignments, chat, choice, forum, and quiz sort of in separate videos for each, so look for those. And I also wanted to show you when you turn editing on and you go next to the drop down for add an activity, you get this little uh, help question mark. And I'll click that and you can actually read kind of in detail about each one. So this, wor this is worth uh, going through on your own and really understanding what each one is. Um, I'll make a couple notes about each of them. The assignments, there are four types and those are covered in other other recordings ranging from one where all it is is a, a bookmark for you to put in a grade to allowing students to comment and upload multiple files and actually submit them after a certain time period. A book is uh, an interesting way of sort of making a, a web-based slideshow. You can have it says multi-page study material here so it's sort of a page with a next and a back button and another page and a next and a back button. Um, so I kind of prefer big, long web pages because it's all in one place and easier to back up and restore and so on. But a lot of people like books, especially for tutorials or building their own uh, lessons. And uh, the chat is not up to speed. You know, right now is 2011 and compared to the other tools out there, but it does have its place. I think most useful for something like a weekly get together or if you have a synchronous meeting with the instructor. Um, Choices are good just to get a simple poll of your students on any topic, whether it be who wants tickets for the concert, or how, did, how well did you understand the material, or which cars are we taking to the meeting. Forums uh, are the bread and butter of my courses, but I tend to have a, a fairly open outlook. There's Every course I do, I create a discussion forum and ask that all conversations related to the class occur on that forum. Um, and then I also create assignment forums uh, don't confuse the word assignment with the actual assignment module here, which is a different thing. But I use the forums as homework, where they do the work and they submit things. Um, and there's a number of different settings on those. And you can also grade them, and there are different ways of tabulating the grades. And if you have rating, uh, if you have roles turned on on your, your installation, you can set it up so people can rate each other and see each other's ratings or not see each other's ratings. So there's an awful lot of options there. A glossary is a list of definitions, also very handy, and I've done workshops where teachers said, wow, that's, that's a pretty neat idea. And you can cause your course to link to glossary entries such that if there's a keyword in your glossary and it appears somewhere else in your course, it'll actually be a hyperlink to that definition. And I could say that, see that coming in handy with any class that has a lot of technical terminology, whether it be medical or computers or what have you. Um, anyways, there's some others here that you can read up on and uh, notice that each one has its own icon. For example, Respondus is an, a third party that does uh, quiz question management, and uh, so they have have a plugin for, for Moodle that you can use and uh, may or may not need installation depending on where you are. So I'll close that, and uh, along the lines of the philosophy of ignore and explore, don't be shy about um, any time you see a question mark, look at it. This is the other one. This will come up, and it explains each of those um, kind of resources that you can add, which you've probably seen a lot in this workshop. So those are your activities. And uh, if you're interested more in each one, very easy to create them. You just drop down and pick the one you want and look at the settings. And each setting has next to it a question mark that explains what the setting does. When in doubt, leave it alone. Leave it with its default. 
but if you want to experiment with something, you know, try it out. Um, w one way to get a, get comfortable with things if you haven't used them before is put something in there and have your students use it, but maybe have it not count for any points. So if they're confused, or even if you're confused as the instructor, there's no harm done, but you start to understand how those activities work.